welcome. This is my first tutorial being recorded with my new computer. Hopefully the audio sounds okay. I had to play with the volume settings and stuff a little bit to get it just right. So uh, hopefully I have it just right. Um, and uh, being my first tutorial on my new computer, and one of the main reasons we got this new computer is to do Blender tutorials. We're not doing anything heavily intensive today, um, but hey, it's Blender anyway, and it does speed up the rendering. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to take this cube, the default cube, and really can do this with any object, and we're going to use an add-on to make it basically smash into pieces when another object hits it. So first thing I'm going to do, and also I'm running Blender 2.58, just to let you know, so uh, you can tell if something's different, it may be because you're running a different version. So I'm running 2.58. I'm going to hit... Um, spacebar here and add in a plane. I'm just going to type plane, add plane, and I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale that plane up pretty big. See how it looks in the camera view. I want kind of the plane just to completely go beyond my camera view so we don't get any background stuff because that's not what I want in this uh, video. I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad and then I'm going to hit 5 to go out of perspective mode and I'm going to hit uh, G to grab and Z to grab on the Z axis. Um, if I'm going too fast for you, it's probably because you're new to Blender, you really should go through some basic tutorials before you jump into something like this. But I'm still going to tell you, try to tell you every key I'm pressing uh, so that you know, but I assume that you know the basics of Blender before you jump into a tutorial like this. I have some basic Blender tutorials uh, and there's also plenty on the Blender website, blender.org. Okay, so we have a plane, we have our cube. Let me select the cube here. And now we need to enable an add-on that isn't that is that comes with the new Blender 2.58, um, but is not enabled by default. Uh, I also want to let you know that this is a feature that I just learned about last night uh, on my WordPress site. Someone, I can't remember the user's name right now. I should have looked it up before I started this tutorial. Um, he recommended this uh, plugin to me, and I've been playing with it, and I'm loving it. So I just want to give credit to whoever that was. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Anyway, I'm going to go up to File, User Preferences. You can also hit Control-Alt-U to bring this up. We're going to go to Add-ons. I'm going to go over here to Object. And there's just a few here, and you can see when it says Fracture Tool. All we have to do is check that to enable it. Now it hasn't changed anything in our scene yet. All it's done is add that tool to our list of tools. So with the cube selected, now I can hit spacebar and type in F-R-A-C, frac, like I'm typing out fracture, and you can see I have a few options here, and we're gonna choose fracture object. When we do that, you can see this menu over here appear, and we're just gonna make a few changes to this. We're gonna turn, turn up the number of shards, of course, you would uh, change this to fit your project, but I'm going to go with 25 here, and I'm going to say Execute. Okay, and as soon as I click Execute, if I go Z on my keyboard to go into wireframe mode, you can see that the cube has now been split into multiple cubes. And if you look at our outliner over here, you can see a list of, it labeled it cube, because that was the original object, dot, and they're listed through by number here a bunch of dot numbers. So there's a bunch of, bunch of shards to this object now. Okay, so next thing we do, I'm gonna go into front view here and I'm going to hit B and box select. I'm gonna select just our shard objects here. So you can see they're all selected and I am going to hit spacebar again and type in again F-R-A-C and this time I'm gonna choose um, uh, set up fracture shards. Boom. And what it does there is basically it's added uh, game physics uh, to each of those objects. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard to go back into shaded mode and zero on my number pad to go to camera mode. And at this point I'm going to hit um, F12. You can see it still looks like a cube. That will render it out. But with my cursor hovering over the 3D view here, I'm going to hit P. And you can see, boom, it just kind of flies apart. Well, there's two issues here. One, we don't want it to fly apart until an object actually hits it. We're going to take care of that in a second. But also the shading doesn't look pretty, any good. And that's because it's set to smooth shading. So with all those objects selected, just come over here to shading and click flat. And now if we hit P with our cursor over our 3D view here, P, you can see it's a much smoother look. Well, really a flatter look. Uh, the shading looks better. 
Okay, so that's great, except for, like I said, we don't want that to happen until an object hits it. Well, we're going to have to work with our logic editor here a little bit. So I'm just going to turn this bottom view here into a logic editor view. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. I'm going to click here and change this to logic editor. And you can see I have all the objects selected, and we could do this individually for each object, but we're going to find a better way to do that. Basically, we're going to select one object, and we have to remember which object that is. So we're going to use the outliner here and just choose one object here. I'm going to choose the first one in the list that is part of our uh, shard object, which is cube.003 in this case. It may be labeled as something else for you, but I'm just choosing the first one there so I remember which one it is. And that's the one I'm going to be editing in the logic editor here. Just to make things easier for you guys to see, I am going to hover my cursor over the logic editor here. I'm going to hit control and up arrow and that makes it full screen. You don't have to do that while you're doing this. I'm just doing it to make it easier for you to see. I'm also going to shrink this properties panel on the side here because we're not going to be working with that. Now we're going to add basically two things to this object. We're going to add uh, a sensor here that says always and and then we're going to say edit object over here. Let's not forget to connect these. And we're going to change the edit object where it says add object. We're going to change that to dynamics. And instead of restore dynamics, we're going to suspend dynamics. So basically this is constantly saying ignore the physics properties for this object. Then we're also going to add the second thing we're going to add. We're going to add a collision but we're not going to set any properties or materials. So this happens anytime something collides with our shard objects. And, and connect this, and then add, or sorry, edit object. Connect these two. And instead of add object, we're going to change this to dynamics. And we're going to leave that as restore dynamics. So the game's going to start up and it's going to say basically, ignore the physics for this object. And then, when something collides into it, restore the physics, the dynamics. So I'm going to hit control arrow down to bring that out of full screen. And right now, we've added that for just this one object. So what we can do now is select the rest of our objects. And the way I'm going to choose to do that is hit uh, 1 on an error pad to go into front view, Z to go into wireframe mode, B, and I'm going to box select. And as long as in our outliner, the object that we added this logic to is still highlighted white. We can, we can now copy the physics from that to all the other ones just by hovering over our 3D view here, hitting spacebar, and hitting typing logic. And you can see copy logic bricks to selected uh, is, uh, shows up. We can click that. And now if you look at our logic view, it's been added to all our objects. So if we go zero on a number pad, Z to go into shaded mode. I can hit P here. You can see nothing happens to our cube just yet. What we're going to do is hit spacebar. I hit escape to get out of game mode, by the way. Sphere, and I'm going to add a UV sphere. I'm going to scale it up just a bit. And then over here, I'm going to go to our physics window, which isn't set for physics for the game engine. What we have to do is come up here, and under Blender Render, we're going to drop down and choose Blender Game. And with the sphere selected, we're going to say rigid body. And I'm going to turn the mass up a little bit so that it's heavier or has more mass than our shards here. I'm going to hit G to grab it and Z on the Z axis, move it up. And now if I hover over our 3D view and hit P, boom. When the sphere hits it, everything shatters. That's great. Uh, what we can do now is go game record animation and hit P and it's going to go real fast this time. Boom, and we can escape when we're done. And what that has done is it's created a bunch of keyframes for all these objects. So if we use our, we can hit Alt A to view the animation. So this is the animation here. Uh, you can also hit escape to stop that and you can hit up arrow and down arrow to jump 10 frames at a time or right and left to scroll through them individually. So let's have a quick look. We'll hit F12 to see what that looks like rendered. The lighting isn't that great. So let's real quick add some good lighting. I'm going to go into top view so I can see everything. I'm going to choose this light source that's already here. That's the default light. And with that selected, I'm going to go to our lighting uh, panel here. Let's move that up. 
I'm going to change this into an area lamp. I'm going to change the size to 6 and samples to 8. And I'm going to uh, rotate that a little bit and grab it. I'm moving it up front because that's my um, going to be my main light. I'm going to move it away here a little bit and rotate it just so it's pointing at our objects here. And I'm going to change the distance down on it to 15. And I'm going to change its energy to 0.5. Now I'll hit F12. Oh, it's definitely looking better. Uh, we can also add a secondary lighting or use some environmental lighting. I'm just going to quickly add a secondary lighting. I'm going to do Shift D to clone that, rotate it around. I'm going to change the energy level on that to 0.2 and make it a slight blue color. It's kind of something I learned from uh, uh, Andrew over at Blender Guru. Although, really that's not necessary anymore with the new environmental lighting settings, but it's just one option. So there we go, that looks a lot better than before. And uh, now we just have to render out our animation. So I'm going to go to our render tab here. And i got to change Blender Game back to Blender Render. And uh, let's see, let's go to our camera view, see where the animation kind of stops. Yeah, so the default 250 looks pretty good. So we'll leave uh, it from 1 to 250. Uh, just to speed up rendering, I'm going to go 720p instead of 1080. Um, and I'll leave most of the other settings how they are, but we're going to change it from PNG. I'm going to render out as an XVID, and I will just call it smash100.avi. If you don't end it in a .avi, it will automatically add that as well as the frames that are being rendered. Um, into the name of the file. Hope that makes sense when I said that. So we have this stuff set, we have a resolution set, uh, and so now all I have to do is hit animate. And it will start, wait, something's not, oh, okay, hit escape. I picked HD 720, I want HD TV 720, or the, the, the resolution and aspect and ratio is off. So now that I've selected the proper dimensions that I want, I'm gonna click animate. And there we go. I'll let this render out and I'll play the uh, final render here in a second at the end of the video. And I just want to say once again thank you for the new computer to the to all my viewers that, uh, that donated. And um, I got a lot more tutorials coming up to, for you guys here this week. Um, as you may have noticed, enough people, uh, most people voted since I asked last week whether I should keep the schedule or not. Most people said no, it's easier for me not to have a schedule, so we're not going to have a schedule anymore. I'm just going to make a video as I learn something, like I just learned how to do this last night and I'm sharing it with you. And um, please visit Films by Chris, that's Chris with the K, there's a link in the description. Uh, and I just hope that you have a great day. And here's that final render.